here are a list of some of the most controversial and, in my opinion, sometimes ridiculous garden products on the market that you can buy to fix your soil. And as someone who studied soil science, I call bullshit on some of these. Okay, so I'm not gonna name product names, but I will name ingredients in products, if you will, and then you can figure out what products I may or may not be talking about, mostly because I don't wanna get sued, so. Okay, let's just get this one out of the way, and that is phytoplankton. This is very common nowadays. We consider this a soil enhancer. As you will note, there is no NP or K value on it, and that is because it's not a fertilizer. And many of these bottles or products do state on them, not for fertilizer, or not intended for fertilizer use, or whatever. Like now, what they do claim it does is help with cutting exchange capacity, moisture holding capacity, you name it. I did do a quick search again for this, and I found one study. One study, it is called Amino Acids And basically, that goes on to say that the specific set of microbes that they were looking at slash testing combined with phytoplankton did not increase the bioavailability of nutrients. Now, it didn't look at phytoplankton in the world of soil enhancing, meaning changing the structure or the chemistry or anything like that. But what we can say is that the bioavailability didn't change, meaning, we have some confidence in the fact that the chemicals within the soil, pH and otherwise, didn't change into a way that was beneficial to the plant in any capacity. Until I see something, and if you geek crew, if you have something, please send them over my way, unless I see something that is like very affirmative in the world of phytoplankton, I don't really have any interest in it, sorry. Okay, the next one is rock dust. So, here's the thing. Rock dust is probably the biggest scam out there. So if you did not know, the reason why this is a scam is because all the soil beneath your feet, even though it feels fluffy and nice, is rock dust. The reason why it's rock dust is because it comes from something called parent material. Now, parent material is actually the material that came from the bedrock that was earth and was formed via different environmental things ranging from wind to rivers to lakes to glaciers smashing them into bits to chemical weathering you name it there's a whole host of different things that cause parent material to turn into soil now soil is made up of three different things sand silt and clay and sand is literally just the baby version of what will be clay later on clay is just a heavily degraded form of sand. Now, when we say soil takes millennia to make, we mean it because you have to think of every rock or every piece of bedrock you see in and around your area that can and will one day over time turn into clay. So you can immediately tell how long that is going to take. This is why we don't want topsoil blowing away into the the, the air. It's actually pretty valuable stuff that uh, Mother Nature very sparingly designs for us. Although, fun fact, I'll, if I can find it, I will put it here, but the Amazon rainforest, all the micronutrients in that is actually from sandstorms in, I believe, the Sahara getting tossed up into the atmosphere, moved across the ocean, and then deposited on the rainforest. And that the rainforest wouldn't exist without the Sahara complete soil science side note like i said i read a lot of junk not junk but just stuff that other people don't care about and that's one of them so uh rock dust no the only time that i would say like maybe use rock dust would be in a potting soil that's made out of peat uh, in an indoor setting for like houseplants or something like that and i don't think it's going to be like inherently gonna change like the micronutrient profile because rock dust still isn't in a form really to be uptaken because that rock dust still has to decompose actually and get broken down into smaller and smaller molecules <laughs> oddly enough so i don't think that that maybe is the case it could i mean in theory increase your cation exchange capacity because it is increasing your surface area i mean just skip it it's just just skip that one okay so this one is probably the most controversial and I will say it's controversial because I actually worked in this space doing research and that is the world of microbes, whether it's mycelium, 
mycorrhizal fungi, trichoderma, bacteria, you name it. There are so many different microbes you can purchase out there, all of which they do say enhances your soil. Now, what I will say is that from what I've seen, it does work. And there is some biotic reactions that do take place between the plant and said version of microbe, so long as it's natively and naturally predisposed to actually making a symbiotic relationship with that plant, meaning you have to have the right species even of microbe in the vicinity of the rhizosphere of that plant in order for it to make any difference at all. So for you to willy-nilly just dump on products that contain microbes, there is a very real possibility it's going to do absolute zero for you. So, so you can save money and not waste it all on something you think is going to help but in return doesn't, I actually very heavily encourage you to research what species are in those products. Make sure that there's a viable and high enough count in the product to actually make a difference in your garden. So what we're looking at is CFUs, any, literally anything. Many of them don't even state that, which kind of makes me hesitant to believe there's anything really in them. Kind of scary, I know, but true. So I would look at the quality of the product, how much microbe quantity is in it, and if the species in it are beneficial to your plants. Now, of course, I always say, be your own garden scientist, go and test things, see if it makes a difference in your garden, and if it works for your plants. If you see something anecdotal or not, go with it. Who cares? You're, it's literally your own garden, your own laboratory in your own yard do what you want. Don't believe the haters. But if you want to know if the micro product you bought is actually making a difference and isn't controversial, get them on and watch this video here on how to test your microbes in your soil. I know it's possible. And this video is what Google says to watch. So they're watching you. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.